good day tubes how's she hanging so just a little iphone thing for you today i got you know swamped and stuff with uh, funeral and then i uh, got that done real fast quick and done and uh ran up to john deere with that cylinder he got her uh pushed back together for me although <laughs> he was having the same problem i was yesterday if you watched yesterday trying to put that uh thing back in the thing there oh man he's like uh i was back in the shop with him i didn't film nothing because he was you know a real he was already busy doing stuff and then I come in you know I'm sure I know how what that's like I don't like that myself and then uh, you know I did it to him so anyways <laughs> so uh, yeah he was having problems he uh, cleaned up the um, where it actually goes first part of the cylinder where it goes in he cleaned that up a little bit um, with some more emery paper and stuff and then um, he's like oh you pretty much got it I'm just gonna give her a little more here just you know just so it doesn't tear nothing I'm like okay so uh yeah he uh he tried shoving that thing on the same thing was happening so he's like uh leave it with me i'm like oh that doesn't sound good because <laughs> you know i wanted to kind of wait for it and then take it home with me because it's like an hour almost an hour drive one way for me right so i'm like uh okay so he's like yeah we'll have to put a we'll have to get that squished down a little more we'll put a what did he say a hose clamp on it let her sit for uh you know an hour or so and then that'll squish her down enough and then it should go in so i'm like oh okay so I left it there and then we went and had some lunch, messed around at a couple of stores and then we went back and uh, he's like, uh, let me go, the, the front guy, the front office guy's like, let me go check on that. So he went back and checked and he's like, oh, he's just working on it right now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, about five, so five, 10 minutes later, he come walking out with her all reassembled. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it's, that's good. And he had the, the, the big gland gland seal thingy block thing all snapped back in and everything too so she's all good to go now i'm a little wee bit concerned because the brand new cylinder we got i could hardly move that rod in and out and this one i could move in and out pretty easily again i'm like oh i don't know if i like that too much so hopefully that cylinder's not wore out and it's just going to do the same thing again i think it's going to be better but i don't know i'm a little concerned so uh what can you do though i kind of really wish i was there to watch him do it because how do i know he didn't just make it easy on himself and yank out that little ring again and uh shove the piston in the way you go here you go bud you know with no seal in it now <laughs> right i he wouldn't do that but uh i don't know i guess he figured he got her in somehow but uh man oh man i wish i could have got some video of their shop there <sighs> They got a pretty darn big shop, okay? Like there is probably six, one, two, three, five or six, like 20, 20 foot doors by probably 18, 15 wide, something huge like that. There's, there's like five doors on each side of this building so they can get in a lot of stuff, you know, and big stuff. And let me tell you, they had big stuff in there. He, the guy I was got to do this for me, he was actually working on a uh, horizontal boring machine that, you know, drills down and drills pipes this way through the ground. Um, not John Deere, though, but he says, oh, it's got a John Deere motor in it. So I'm like, oh, I guess you got to service it then, do you? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, well, that's all right. So he was working on that. And then there was uh, another big, huge tractor in there. Oh, my goodness, that thing... I think the guy probably would have been sitting about as high as up on my uh, big trailer here in his, in his seat. You know, one of those great big ones with like, oh, two tires, two monster huge tires on each side. Like huge, huge, huge horsepower, eh? So I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And then the other side, it was really weird because you come through like the, uh, the uh, storefront side and... Uh, the storefront side and uh you come through into their workshop like the big garage workshop and there's like holy crap there's like a huge arch thing of this great big sprayer right there and you see these real skinny tires are like 15 foot tall and then this great big sprayer thing above you you know like one of those great big sprayers where the arms all you know they all fold way out and stuff i'm like whoa that's a pretty cool thing <laughs> it's like a tunnel of sprayer it was so cool uh, yeah, and then this guy was working way, way at the far back of the shop, so I got to walk all the way through the shop and, you know, see everything, right? So that was kind of freaking cool. And, uh, yeah, you got her built. Um, I also got a big five-gallon pail of some 1030 weight oil. I'm going to, while well, both tractors need a change of oil, and, um, 
I am going to I am going to put this 1030 in. They said it's okay to put that in for winter stuff, so maybe the starting in the winter might be a little better than it has been. Uh, the little guy should be fine with the big one. I don't know if he's still having problems starting or what, but uh, last year, if you remember, if you don't remember, I had trouble to get the big, big tractor starting it, and uh, in the cold, it would rrr, 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 and then done. Figured it was battery. I don't know. I changed the battery. I changed the starter. I changed the alternator. I changed uh, the alternator was probably fine, but I did it anyways. Changed the battery starter, and I think I finally w worked it down to that. It was actually some cables that needed replaced, so replaced them, and it seemed to be better, but it still wasn't great. So this year I'm going to try uh, changing the weight from the 1540 I normally use to the 1030. Uh, he says that should help. He's like, you could go to a 020 synthetic stuff, but he says it's really expensive. So if the John Deere guy himself is saying it's really expensive, it's probably really expensive. So I'm like, oh, well, we'll try a jug of this stuff first. And actually, um, what's the big jug worth? It's going to be enough. But it's like a great big five-gallon pail of oil, right? So... Uh, I got filters, I got, I think, everything else. So they charged for that big thing. Ooh, a little more than I thought it was going to be. Uh, $101.93 for... Uh, I did not say, but it's one of the big pails. Plus 50 oil, 10W30. And they also charge you $2.50 my... Uh, environmental levy fee what a scam i don't know whatever but that they charge you that on that and i think on filters too they charge you this environmental fee it's like really like what a scam why don't you charge like i don't know breathing air fees why hasn't someone done that yet you know like holy cow but anyways uh yeah just a little quickie update it's been a real crappy friggin day as you can see out here it's you know raining and crappy and stuff and it's been like that friggin day and I had a funeral today too that went good wasn't too bad then um, but you know it's like every time I have a funeral it frickin rains usually and it's like why <laughs> why do you have to rain when I gotta you know be out in the in the rain you know I don't mind working in the rain I have no problem with that it's the mess that I make you know like the grounds mushy and and soft and I'm bringing dirt in to fill back in and then and I leave these great big ruts and mess, mess and stuff you know it's like really if it was dry out it wouldn't have done that you know fluff the grass back up and away you go but now I gotta you know bring in loads of topsoil and smooth everything out and then reseed everything it's like really oh that's kind of one thing I'm glad we kept this tractor going and didn't maybe get the big uh 310 SJ because that uh that would have made a wicked more mess <laughs> oh that thing is so much more heavier too you know and uh yeah i'm kind of glad we stayed the way we did but anyways uh that's probably about it for today uh, i can't really think of anything else um tomorrow i might might get into changing oil i don't know i want to kind of i want to pull the bucket off the little mini x again and get some uh oh man what is going on with my nose <sighs> get some uh, cardboard templates made up of the um, pin thingies for the ear thingies on the bucket because I want to not start building a bucket right now but I want to kind of get all the the cardboard cutout template things done so I can trace that onto the new metal and then cut it out of the new metal right I think what I'm gonna do though is for the holes for the pins is get they sell I think it was I think it was Home Depot I got the pins for the other or the hole saw drill the ice hardened hole saw drill for when I was doing the other ones here and it actually worked really well I've never really had much luck at all with hole saws they go for a bit and then they're and then they rip the teeth off and they're dull and crappy but these Milwaukee ones are ice hardened or something like that they're actually pretty friggin decent and uh cut really fast too it's amazing it's like wow your metal cutting metal it's not like it's a diamond cutting metal you know or whatever it's uh 
it, uh, it actually cut really well, and that was an inch and three eighths, I think, for the big tractor. This one, I think, is right on a one inch, so that should be fairly easy to, to borrow that hole out. I've done it before with the plasma, you know, you and then you're all raggedy edges, and you got to try to smooth it all off. I'm like, dang, with that, I'm just gonna do it with the uh, the machine there. So I kind of think that's what I'm gonna do, and um, we'll have to get uh, some measurements or not measurements, uh, cardboard templates cut out and uh, go from there. So uh, just for fun, <laughs> I uh, contacted the uh, Kubota guy that I bought the thing from. I'm like, um, does there, what's the, uh, how much is the uh, thumb kit for it, for that tractor or for the, um, the Mini X? And he looked it up and he's like, well, there's nothing from Kubota, but there's an aftermarket one. He says it's fifteen hundred and forty dollars plus installation. I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> I mean, holy crap! But the thing is, there's a problem here. I'm not going to be able to use the thumb now. I don't know if this kit he was trying to sell me comes with something else because <coughs> the hydraulics I've found out on the arm of the backhoe hole part. Um, the auxiliary hydraulics are only, it's, uh, how do you explain this? It's not a dual acting system, it's only a single acting system, which is really weird why they set it up like that. When you push that pedal, it pushes the fluid out the one port, three or whatever, and then out your whatever, and then into the other port, and it's just a return line. So there's only one, one thing, so... That kind of is stupid and it really kind of sucks because now how do you use a thumb? Because you could, you know, say this is my bucket, this is your thumb. Well, this, okay, but then what? You can't retract it again. So I guess maybe you'd have to push your push your pedal. Does that work? Oh, geez, I don't... Oh, that still wouldn't work. Yeah, so basically you'd be screwed. You'd push it and then that would be it. So then you'd push again and then you're screwed so I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to put a thumb on there that uh, mm, that is probably not gonna work the only thing that um, that thing would actually run I guess is a auger motor kind of thing you know where it's only gonna spin one way which is kind of be kind of stupid but There, there would be a way you could run the thumb. Just trying to brainstorm in my head here, but it would be really stupid. No, it still wouldn't work. I'm thinking you could have quick connect, quick connectors, and you could, you know, if you want to squeeze the thumb, you'd push the connector on this hose on here, so your piston would squeeze it. But then if you want to retract it again, you'd have to switch this hose to the back hose, and then close. Yeah, that wouldn't work. That'd be just more of a pain in the rear end so yeah I don't uh, I don't know if that machine's actually uh, able to do a thumb he said there's an aftermarket one but now <laughs> there might be some other valve system that they might have to give you to make that work I, I don't know I don't know but uh, kind of sounds like maybe we won't get a thumb for it um, the only thumb you could use is maybe one of those ones that's non hydraulic that kind of sits in one place all the time so when you curl your bucket it curls it into the thumb and you dump and it just stays there kind of thing and then when you're not using it you can unhook the little rod and then it folds back onto the arm maybe we'll have to make one like that uh something that's uh what do they call it a static maybe a static static thumb i think they call it or stationary thumb or something like that that's probably about the only thing that's going to work for there but uh, i was thinking of like doing an auger auger motor on it too you could run that you could run <clears throat> out of the pressure side into the auger motor and then there's a secondary part that goes back into the drain part now I guess that would work um, yeah I guess that would work but I don't know like it's maybe just because it's such a small machine they don't have stuff set up like that for that it's just mostly meant for like digging little still stuff it's not really meant for the attachment so that kind of sucks, but um, I do want to build some buckets for it. I do want to build a little ripper tooth for it. Uh, probably not even going to use the ripper tooth 
for anything because I doubt it would actually rip anything anyways. It's pretty small. That machine's pretty <coughs> pretty tiny. Um, but I did rip out a couple of um, tree stump shrub things at some graves the other day. Actually, the grave I dug with today, the funeral I had today, I had to rip some out of there and there was some cedar stuff in there. <coughs> oh, I need a drink. Uh, cedar stuff in there. It, it tore that out pretty good. It took a little bit though. It took a little bit. I mean, this is a small machine. It's only a 10 horse motor in the thing. Like, what do you expect out of it, right? Um, and then there was some other ones which were um, kind of looks like those little Christmas tree ones. And their stumps were probably, I don't know, four or five inches round. And it actually hawked those out pretty good. That was, that was decent. Um, so that's all right. But I think my, oh man, <coughs> my expectations of what I wanted to really do with this thing are probably not going to be exactly what I was thinking. Like I was thinking I wanted to get a, um, an auger motor for it so I could, you know, drill cremation holes. <laughs> Done. I don't think it's going to run that. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> it's a little bit too small. I should have maybe gone with the next one up, like the, the one we rented, like the U17. I think it might have been a little better, but then you're kind of almost getting a little bit too big for machine size and I didn't really want to go too too much bigger right so uh, we'll try her you know and hopefully she works out good um, with this one we got so because uh, the, the U17 oh man they're expensive holy frig Whew, like really what is it you're actually paying for here <laughs> like holy cow it's expensive <laughs> these little guys but anyways <coughs> My throat must be getting dry. Too much talking. So anyways, I guess that's about it for today. Um, I can't really think of too much else, but tomorrow I'll probably tracing some crap and uh, uh, maybe we'll do an oil change on one of the machines anyways. I don't know if I'll get to both of them tomorrow, but one machine perhaps anyways will we'll do. Probably the backhoe first. I think, well, like they're both over that 100 hours that needn't change, so, you know. Uh, geez, it doesn't seem that long ago I did the backhoe, though. Huh. I can't remember. Maybe I made a video on it. I can't remember. Anyways, we'll figure that out. But it's definitely, I think it's that 20, just over 2,300 hours now on the backhoe, so it's probably, it's probably due for change. Uh, wouldn't hurt it anyways to get, you know, even if it is a little bit more premature than it should be, but the uh, little tractor, I think it just clicked over 105-ish hours, so yeah, it's due. It's due for a change. Uh, yeah, so we'll do that, and tracing, and maybe something else. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, this freaking rain, eh? Stupid old rain. Oh, well, it's a good day to be sitting right by the nice warm wood stove, which I had one. I <laughs> don't have one. Nice and warm, nice heat, makes you fall asleep. <sighs> but anyways, that is it for today. Uh, sorry, it was just a talking thing, but I uh, just got uh, all preoccupied with doing, um, you know, funerals and running up to John Deere. That's a long freaking time getting up and down to John Deere there, you know. I had to wait around there for an hour or so. So now the day's like freaking shot. So anyways, that's all we can do. So you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. And we will we'll catch you tomorrow for oil changing and probably tracing out patterny things. <laughs>